Welcome to the EZU Commissions Lesson Series. In this series, we will explore popular workflows when working with commissions in Easy Links, such as creating service team mappings, commission rules, and reconciling commission statements. In this first lesson, we will be focusing on service team mappings and rules. So, let's get started. Whether you have a brand new commission setup or just need to add a new producer, the first place we need to go is service team mappings. To get there, hover over the policy management icon. Then, click Manage Service Teams. This screen will show you all your internal and external producers that have been entered into the system. You must create a service team mapping entry for any individuals or entities that will be paid out on a commission statement from your agency. To add a new service team member, click Add New Mapping at the top. Now, choose the producer type. Keep in mind, producer and CSR are treated the same for calculating commissions in the system. We provide the distinction to help you organize your mappings. If you choose the external option, then this producer will receive their cut of commission from the gross commission amount before any other amount is calculated for CSRs or producers. Next, you will need to enter a producer code and name for the mapping. The best practice here is to use the person's initials for the code. For example, if I have an agent named Jessica Day, I might use JD as their producer code. For the producer name, enter their name as you would like it to appear on your commission's reports. Then click Save. We see the new producer has been added to the service team mapping list. Now, click on Edit next to the new producer's name. You'll notice that you cannot change the producer type. This is locked in at creation, so please make sure that you select accordingly. Lastly, you can set a producer to inactive if you no longer want to see them as an option when setting up commission rules or running reports. This is a toggle, they can be brought back from inactive at any time by checking the show inactive box to the top left. Then, click activate next to the producer to bring them back. Now that the service team is set up, let's get into commission rules. To get to your rules, hover over the policy management icon. Then, click service team rules. This screen houses all of the commission rules that are created for your agency. While creating these rules, you will use the service team mappings created previously. In this way, you can control how your producers get paid. To create a rule, click the New Rule button to the top right. The system will take you through the three steps to create a rule, adding conditions, adding payees, and naming the rule. First, add conditions to the rule. Think of a condition as criteria for how you want this rule to match to a policy. Let's create a rule where we split the commission between two agents. This will be a clean 50 to 50 split. There are many different ways and options on how to set up these conditional criteria. For this rule, we want to make sure that it will only match to new business policies that are on an account assigned to either John Smith or EasyLinks admin user. We also want to make sure that the master company is either progressive or travelers. To begin, click Add Condition and watch as the conditions are set. A useful feature is the ability to stack conditions, such as having multiple master companies assigned to agents or producer code overrides from a single condition. This can help your agency to drastically cut down on the number of rules needed. To add multiple agents or producers, simply click the people icon to the right of the field. A new window will pop up where you can select one or more people to add to the condition. To add multiple selections for criteria, simply click inside the box and a drop-down of options will appear. You can remove a selection by clicking the X in the top left-hand corner. To remove a condition, click the trash can icon to the right of it. Once all necessary conditions are added, click Add Payees to specify the payees. Initially, the commission amount will be paid 100% to the agency. By adding payees, you can start splitting out the pay however you'd like. Go ahead and click Add Payee to start adding payees for the rule we just created. The best practice is to choose the service team option for the pay category, as this will ensure your reports and accounting look clean and readable. After adding all the payees, you can see that both producers will be getting 50% of the agency commission. Next, click Preview and Name Rule to continue. On this step, name the rule and review the conditions and payees. The best practice is to name it so that at a glance you know who and how much. 
For example, this rule name is EAUJS, Progressive Travelers, 5050. This tells me that the producers with service team codes EAU and JS are each getting paid 50% on their policies with Progressive and Travelers. The description is useful if you need to go into more detail about the rule and its conditions. Another useful feature is that you can see the complete rule written out in an if slash then format below. If the conditions are met, then the commission will be paid out to these payees accordingly. If anything looks off, you can click the link to change conditions or change payees to update the terms. Once everything looks good, click save rule. Now, you can see the new commission rule in the list. Next, let's set up another rule. If you need to distribute commission to producers other than assigned agents on customer accounts, it is recommended to use the producer code override condition. For example, if your agents typically cross-sell policies, then the best practice is to utilize the producer code override condition instead of assigned producer. This way, you can specify the agent that the rule should trigger for a per-policy basis using their producer code. Please note, the agent's code must be entered into the producer code override field on the policy to match correctly. Now, let's add payees. Here you see, the agents we entered in the last step, by their producer code override, will receive 25%. Next, click preview and name rule. Here, you see we have named the rule with a title that is quick and easy to understand, at a glance. Next, save the rule. Now, you should see the new rule in the list. Let's create one more rule, this time using an external producer. Let's set this rule with some different conditions. In this case, imagine that you have an external brokerage that provides you with referrals. We will set up a rule that looks at a certain lead source and will then trigger the rule match when detected, paying the correct amount out to the brokerage. To do this, set a condition using the lead source field with a value of referral external or whatever you named your lead source. Keep in mind that this lead source will need to be input on the account under the lead info section for the rule to match correctly. Next, set up payees. Here, we will use the service team category again, but from here choose the external producer. You will see a yellow warning appear, letting you know that external producers will reduce the total agency commission. This means that whatever amount of commission you give them will come out of the gross commission, and the leftover amount will then be considered the new 100%. Now, click Preview and Name Rule. Once you fill out the information on this page, save your new rule. Now that we're back on the rules homepage and have some rules to work with, let's take a look at the different elements on the screen. In the center is the current list of commission rules. On the left is the rules filter. You can use these filters or add more of your own by clicking more filters to drill down to specific rules that you would like to view. Above the rules list is a search bar you can use to search by rule name and payee. This is useful if you know exactly what you are looking for and do not have a need to utilize the more granular filters. In the top right are the new rule and edit columns buttons. The new rule button allows you to create a new commission rule like we did earlier. The edit columns button enables you to decide which columns you would like to see on the commission's rule list. Now, when Easy Links looks at a commission statement, it will run through the entire list of rules from top to bottom, trying to find a matching rule for each line item on the statement. Because of this, you will want to organize the rules with the most specific at the top to more general as we move towards the bottom. Let's take a look at how we should order these on the list. If a rule has more conditions specified, then it is more specific than a rule that has less conditions. Additionally, there's a difference between policy level and applicant level rules. A rule is at the account level if the assigned producer condition is specified. A rule is at the policy level if the producer code override field is specified. A policy level rule is always more specific than an account level rule. In this case, the new business and producer override rules need to be moved above the admin assigned rule, with the new business rule being placed before the producer override rule. To do this, grab the handle to the left of the rule and drag it above the admin assigned rule. You'll need to do this individually for both rules. Now, before we wrap up this tutorial, let's briefly go over the actions dropdown. This can be found in the far right column of each rule. Here, you'll find options to edit, copy, and delete. 
The edit option allows you to edit the rule. The copy option allows you to create a copy of the rule. And the delete option allows you to delete the rule. Once you have your service team mapped, rules created, and ordered accordingly, you have completed all of the necessary setup for reconciling commissions in EasyLinks. Thanks for watching.